I love money so much. What even is money anyway? Well, imagine a government wants to build a project. Something to increase the national wealth. Like a dam or a wind farm or an hospital. Right. The government decides to build it and they pay the people money to do the work. But where does that money come from? What is it? Nowhere. They just create it. That's what I'm saying. The act of government spending creates the money. It's just numbers in the central bank account. Like an overdraft? Exactly. The government just spends its overdraft, creating the money to pay the workers and to pay the suppliers so that they will build the dam. <laughs> Mad. So it's just made of nothing? Yes, it's just a debt. But it'll never be repaid. It'll be passed around, but it'll never be repaid. Repaying the debt would destroy the money, and their society needs money. Some of it will be destroyed by taxes or will lose value in inflation, but they can never pay off the debt, <laughs> because then they would have no money. That's mad. But that's, that's just the start, you see. Each of the workers and suppliers will put the money from the government's central bank into their own private bank accounts. Okay, for safekeeping? Well, yes, but also for yield. You what? The value of their money is decreasing all of the time. So they put it into private bank accounts, which offer to pay interest at around the inflation rate. <laughs> okay, but where does the bank get the yield money? Well, the law allows banks to loan out 90% of the money they have on deposit to private businesses and people, so that they too can invest to build houses and factories and things. Okay, but that means the government workers have got all this government money in their bank. And then also, the bank borrowers have got all this private money in the private bank as well. There's, there's twice as much money. <laughs> well, yes, but not twice as much though, because of course, the process repeats. The bank borrowers pay suppliers and workers, and they in turn put their profits and wages into a bank, which loans out 90% of it to others. <laughs> again and again and again. <laughs> it's like 99% of all the money is just private bank debt. <laughs> yes, and remember, it's charged at interest. You are. But where's the money to pay the interest going to come from? They have to print that too. <laughs> so that debt can only grow and grow then, <laughs> exponentially. <laughs> That's right. And look at this. 16 orbits ago, the private banking industry did indeed collapse. It failed to pay its own debt. Bloody hell. What did they do? Their entire system ground to an halt. No money was created to pay the interest. The debts were accruing, and nobody could pay. Mental. In the end, all the governments just made more base money to bail the bankers out and buy their debts. So, now the public are paying the interest. The, the yearly interest is close to adding up to more than they can take from all the actually productive members of their society. Didn't all this extra money cause inflation? cause prices to go up. Oh yes, especially asset price inflation, making the rich richer. But eventually also commodity inflation, food and energy, and most of all rent. That drove up the cost of living, making <laughs> the poor poorer. And how do they deal with that? They raised interest rates to reduce commodity demand. They did what? They raised interest rates to reduce the commodity demand. <laughs> That's just going to make all this debt money even more expensive. It's going to drive up rents and bankrupt governments and increase the rate at which money flows from the poor to the rich. Yes, this is what I've been saying. Their entire system is inherently designed to collapse. 
hyperinflation to solve inflation. The folks back at home are going to want to subscribe so bad. They'll be forwarding this episode to all of their friends.